Hey folks, how's it going out there? We're going to do a video on lithium batteries and some questions you may want to ask yourself before you make a major purchase. So stay tuned and we'll get right to it. Okay, so questions you may want to ask yourself. Number one, am I planning on keeping this boat for years? Because if you're not, if you're planning on selling it, the new buyer may or may not give you more money for the lithium batteries. You know, it depends on what he thinks about them. So unless you're planning on transferring the batteries to a new boat and the charging system and everything else, you may want to hold off until you get a new boat. Second thing, is this battery for a kayak, a John boat, a 360, you know, what's it for? If it's for a kayak or a John boat, man, this is a perfect fit for you. You got lightweight, you got lots of power, and how much am I willing to spend? Uh, these batteries are, they're expensive. They can be eight to $1,200, depending on what you get. And do I currently have a problem? If you're not having a problem like me, with my trolling motor, I can go six, eight hours with no problem. I've never run out of power on my trolling motor. I'd like to get a lithium, but I'm, I'm really on the edge after doing all this research. And how many times a year do you fish? The payback on lithium battery, if you're not having a problem, if you're like me, and you're fairly satisfied with the lead acid batteries, but you'd like to upgrade to the lithiums, it all depends on how much you use it as to getting your money back out of it. All right, first let's talk about safety. So you guys have heard about the fires from the cell phones and, and other devices with lithium batteries. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that. They're made with cobalt oxide and it's not as stable as the phosphate that they use for a marine battery. So these things are really safe. They also come with a battery management system to protect them, keep from overheating, things like that. Hey guys, over here, over here, look, look, look. Hey, let's pause for a minute. If you like the content, you like what you see, go down and hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notifications for future videos. All right, so your advantages, they're maintenance free. You get an extended lifespan, five, up to five times longer than a normal lead acid battery, significantly more power available than a lead acid battery, and we'll go over that in more detail. Uh, rapid charging, that's a big thing. Uh, lithium ion battery is not limited by the absorption rate of the battery. You can charge these things really fast. And to put all the advantages, to kind of sum them up, you probably got a battery operated drill with a lithium ion battery in it. If you remember the old batteries, you know, when they, they just start running slower and lose power, but they'd still run. A lithium ion battery, it's giving you full power until it just completely dies. So that, that's a huge advantage right there. All right, as far as being maintenance free, you know, lead acid batteries are now, most of them or a lot of them are maintenance free. You can get your, your AGMs, absorbent glass mat batteries. You can get your gel batteries and they're good for rough conditions. So there's been a lot of advancements in the lead acid. Lithium ion batteries are also maintenance free. They're great in rough waters. They got a lot of shock absorbency. So they're ideal for a marine boat application or kayak, you know, whatever you're using. All right, here's where we get into the payback. So a deep cycle lead acid battery, you normally you're gonna get, and, and it depends on manufacturer, you know, look it up, traditionally about 500 discharge charge cycles, and I'll just call it a discharge cycle. With a lithium ion, you're getting up to and maybe exceeding 3,000 discharge cycles. So that's, that's substantial. And again, they're depending on how much you fish, you know, you're gonna get that payback on that lithium ion battery. Now, the other advantage is when you have a regular lead acid battery, and many of you may not know this, but on a regular lead acid battery, the manufacturers recommend you take them down to 50% and not any lower before you recharge them. And if you're like me, I've probably taken mine down past 50%, 
uh, because you really you don't have any way of knowing. That little indicator on your trolling motor or whatever it may be that has a little four lights, guys, that's useless. If you're depending on that, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so 50%. When you go below that and then charge them back up, you get what's called sulfation. And that's a buildup on the plates. And over time, that sulfation keeps the battery from accepting a full charge and weakens your battery and eventually you run out of power more quickly. It doesn't have the capacity to hold the charge that it did when it was brand new. Now a lithium ion battery, not only can it withstand 3000 discharge cycles, you can drain it down to 80% per most manufacturer recommendations. So what it comes down to the 3,000 charges means you can use up to 80% of that battery capacity and recharge it 3,000 times without it losing any capacity in the battery. Because of the different chemistry of the battery, now to the fun part, more available power, right? That's what we all want. We all want more power. So a typical lead acid battery, you can discharge down to the 50% like we talked about, but there's, there's another factor in there. So not only with the lithium ion do you gain 30% more of the battery capacity before you got to recharge, you also have what's called Pukert's Law. When they set up the amp hours, or if you look at it, a lot of these deep cycle batteries are now using reserve capacity, which is the minutes a battery will deliver 25 amps until it reaches 10.5 volts. The reserve capacity is a good number to go by. But... Pukert's Law says that the more current I draw from that battery at one time, like instead of 25 amps, let's say I'm, I got the trolling motor on 10 and I'm drawing 42 amps, I'm going on down the lake for an extended period of time, that is going to really dig into that capacity. As you use more current, your capacity is going to drop off quicker than it would at that 25 amps. The more power you use, the higher amperage you use, the less capacity the battery actually has from what's on the nameplate. Okay, you don't have that with lithium ion. There's no Pukert's law. It's the 80% capacity of those amp hours is what you have. They're lightweight and they're smaller. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a lot of you probably don't know, but in your smaller boats, like say uh, my tracker, it comes with a flooded lead acid battery, which means it's got the caps you pull off, you, you fill it with water, it's not a maintenance free battery. One of the main reasons for that is weight. When you go to the absorbent glass mat batteries or the gel batteries, you're adding a considerable amount of weight to that boat. And on a small vessel, that matters. Especially you guys in, in kayaks and bass buggies. Like I said, the lithium is a perfect fit for you guys. Now the size savings comes in more than one way, depending on what application you're using. If you have a trolling motor that's 24 or 36 volt, you know what? You can get one battery. And if you want more power, you can get two 24 volt batteries. And they're not going to be a whole lot bigger than that 12 volt. So you're going to save a lot of space. And you're also going to save a lot of connections. The connections on the batteries, a lot of times, that's where the failures happen. Those connections get corroded. They get loose from jiggling around. Less connections, the better. All right, here we go to rapid charging. A regular battery, you can charge with as many amps as you want, but it will only accept it so fast because of the chemical reaction of the sulfuric acid on the plates. It's only going to discharge that off the plates at, at a certain rate. Lithium ion really doesn't have much of a barrier. Again, I'm going to go back to your drill motor. If you remember back before lithium ion was popular with drill motors, you put a battery on the charger and you always had to have one on the charger and one in the drill motor because it may take two hours to charge that battery. These new ones, no, 15 minutes. That's because of the lithium ion. You can charge with more current on lithium ion battery than you can with the lead acid. So it charges up to five times faster. I don't know about you guys, but you get off the lake. By the time you go eat, have a beer, BS with your friends, get back to the room, plug your boat in, and you're leaving again at four o'clock in the morning. 
you ain't got a whole lot of time to charge your batteries. Or if you're dry camping or something like that and all you have is a generator, you don't want to run the generator for 8, 10, 12 hours, right? There are definite advantages to rapid charging. All right, so here's some disadvantages. I know you didn't think there were any, but there are. There are some disadvantages. Initial cost, although like I say, over time, you can overcome that and actually save money with the lithium ion, but you got to use them quite a bit. Limited burst capacity, and we'll talk about that more here in a minute. And the charging complexities, because they are rapid charging, yeah, they're not, it's not the same as a lead acid battery. So let's talk about these. Like I said, you could spend eight to $1,200 for a marine lithium ion battery. It does come with a battery management system and it normally comes with a charger. It's not just the battery. You get everything you need with that battery. I won't say it's a good deal, but with the 3000 discharge cycles over the lifetime of the battery, you got to figure out how often am I going to use this to compensate for the extra money I'm going to put into it. If you're not limited by space, you're not limited by weight, you know, you really do got to look at this cost. Okay, the burst power. This is a big one, guys. If you're thinking you're going to take the lithium-ion battery and you're going to use it for a cranking battery and use it with your electronics, like the way you're probably set up now, it's not a good fit for that. There's a couple of reasons. One, depending on the battery, and you got to look at the manufacturer, it may only have 100 to 200 cranking amps. In other words, it won't put that power, that real heavy power out for 30 seconds. That's what's called burst power, and that's when you're cranking your engine and starting. So you may still end up with a lead acid battery as a cranking battery and your electronics running off the lead acid battery because you don't want to run your sonar units off your trolling motor batteries. You get too much interference. Charging complexities. All right, guys, as far as the charging complexities go, you got another one. You've also got temperature. You can't charge lithium ion batteries below freezing. And for this reason, most of them have internal heaters. So you need to make sure if you live in the cold country that the batteries you're buying or the batteries you have in a boat that you've already bought have the internal heaters and that's part of the battery management system. Because from what I understand, it will ruin the battery if you charge it below freezing. So the alternator on your big motor, if you're going to try charging it while you go down the lake, if you're thinking, well, this is great, you know, I got my system set up to where when I'm cranking my big motor, I can put a little charge on my trolling batteries. You can do that, but you got to have a DC to DC converter to run it off your alternator to charge your batteries. Unfortunately, the rapid charging gets you there because what will happen, those batteries will accept everything the alternator's putting into them you overheat the alternator on your on your big motor. So unfortunately, it's not recommended trying to charge those with an alternator without a DC to DC converter. You can also get a battery isolation management system, you know, to prevent damage to the alternator. So there are some ways around it. You don't charge a lithium ion battery the same way that you charge a, a lead acid battery. A lithium ion does not need uh, what they call the float voltage. You know, it doesn't need to be plugged in all the time. No need for it. Uh, the charger that comes with it, it's going to put a pretty hefty charge on those batteries and then it's going to cut off. That's not a charger that you want to use for your lead acid battery as well. So are you going to end up with two chargers? You might. Probably there are some chargers out there on the market and I need to look into that, and I didn't, and I apologize, but I, I run the, uh, you know, the dual charger where I got one set of leads that goes to my trolling batteries and one set of leads that goes to my cranking battery, and it charges them differently. And I know on mine, when I bought it, you, it didn't recommend charging lithium-ion batteries with that particular type. So there probably are some out there. Uh, you just have to do some research on that. All right, so all in all, would I recommend the lithium-ion batteries? You bet. 
depending on the application. Am I going to run out and buy one this year? Probably not. Uh, I've still got another, you know, good year, at least on the batteries in my boat, because I keep them well maintained. And unless I start having problems, I'm probably going to run them next year, because like I say, I currently don't have a problem. I would love to say that I fish so much that there would be a payoff for me, but to be honest with you, I don't believe there is. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and you know what? We'll see you on the next one. Hey, hey, calm down there, big boy. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. All right, I got him settled down now, so y'all take care. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.